Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's Monday, January 26, 2015, and here are our top stories. Tonight, if you get sick after taking a vaccine, blame someone who didn't. And global warming strikes again as the East Coast prepares for a massive blizzard. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. The truth is they don't know what's going to happen because the earth is always changing. First it's global freezing, then it's global warming. Now they say climate change. Well, after the snow job the Senate Republicans tried to pass on us last week about climate change, we're seeing a heavy dose of reality headed towards New York City. And it's not coming uh, from Washington, D.C. It's not that kind of snow job. It's a real snow job. The Northeast residents are preparing for a crippling blizzard that could dump up to two feet of snow over a 250-mile stretch. They say cities big and small along the Philadelphia to Boston corridor, an area with more than 35 million people, began shutting down on Tuesday. More than 5,000 flights have been canceled. Businesses are closing, and people are hitting the stores, emptying the shelves. As you can see from this article that is on Infowars.com today, we have shoppers ramsacking grocery stores and emptying the shelves because they didn't prepare. Who's laughing at the preppers now? They say as the Northeast Coast residents brace for what many are predicting to be the biggest blizzard of all time, last minute shoppers are rushing into grocery stores, leaving empty shelves as they make preparation for a snow of epic proportions. And of course, you don't want to wait until the last minute. And as Adon points out in the story, he says ill-prepared New Yorkers apparently didn't learn any lessons from the snowpocalypse that hit the East Coast last year which left miles of motorists stranded on the highway, stirred Atlanta residents into grocery buying panic, despite only bringing about three inches of snow. We're now looking at two feet of snow. And when we look back on the vote last week, the ridiculous climate change vote that the Republicans didn't have the guts to stand up to, they could have easily pointed out that the liberals have had to change the name to climate change in order to hide the fact that there isn't any global warming. They've been caught with thousands of emails, 6,000 precisely, in ClimateGate saying they wanted to hide the decline in temperatures, that their models were not working. Yet the Republicans didn't have the guts to stand up to that. As a matter of fact, they almost passed a resolution saying that climate change was man-made. That's precisely what the Democrats want so that they can pay off their corporate backers and get carbon credits enacted, as well as carbon taxes. They would love to put carbon taxes on all of us while gas prices are artificially depressed by the Saudis continuing to maintain production as demand is falling, plummeting. But of course, it's all tied to the GOP trying to pay off their corporate backers on the Keystone pipeline. They both have their backers that uh, tell them what to do. They could care less about your agenda and the GOP has illustrated that from the right after the election back in November, they came back and the first thing they did was to pass the Keystone Pipeline legislation for the ninth time. Of course, it wasn't gonna go through a Democrat Senate, it wasn't gonna be signed by Obama, but now the very first order of business with the new Senate, with the new Congress is, guess what? Passing Keystone again. They don't care about Obamacare, they don't care about open borders, they don't care about your concerns. They're only going to perform for their corporate backers. Nothing could be more evident about this. And of course, if you want to know who owns the Republican Party, look and see who's going to benefit from the Keystone Pipeline. But that's not even important. The fact is, is that they are for sale to the corporate bidders, and they're going to do their bidding when they get to Congress. And of course, no matter what kind of procedural tricks McConnell uses, no matter how much he angers the Democrats, he's not going to get them to vote for the Keystone bill unless he agrees to help them with their corporate sponsors. It's like back in the days of Reagan and Tip O'Neill. You vote for my spending increase, I'll vote for your spending increase. This is about an increase of control, an increase of revenue for their corporate backers. And of course, the Democrats are trying to make the case for climate change so that they can get carbon credits sent to their sponsors an indulgence to allow you to uh, use energy that's paid to private corporations, as well as carbon taxes. Look at what they were telling us just a year ago. It was the New York Times, of all people, saying the end of snow. Well, they haven't seen the end of snow. They had a climatologist that was saying, we're not even going to be able to hold Olympic Games by the end of the century because we're going to rise seven degrees in temperature. Hasn't happened.
It's not a trend that they can point to. Exactly the opposite has happened. And of course, Al Gore said that the polar ice caps were going to be melted by 2013. That hasn't happened either. He's still trying to find a way to make you pay for everything that you do and everything that you produce to pay him an indulgence. Now, as we see the snow job that's coming on climate change, we understand there's a snow job that's been sold to us about the surveillance state. And at the heart of that is Google. We're gonna look at both the past and the future of Google and a story from today's headlines that gives us an insight into their close collaboration with the surveillance state. Now, it was just last week that we talked about Google's Aaron Schmidt at Davos saying that he saw the end of the internet. That was the way the headlines read in the mainstream media. But of course, Paul Joseph Watson got it right when he says he's really greasing the skids for an internet brain chip. He pointed out they asked if uh, such a system would be vulnerable to government surveillance. And a fellow named Huffman globally responded that people should just trust Google. Yeah, you should just trust them. Don't be concerned about what they're going to do. They've proven themselves so trustworthy, haven't they? Well, not in today's headlines. We're going to see that uh, they've turned over a lot of information. Of course, we know they've been a part of the PRISM uh, program with uh, the government, but they've been deeply embedded for decades with the CIA, with the surveillance state. There was an excellent article that was written by Medium.com. You'll find it on Infowars.com. It came out this weekend talking about how the CIA made Google. Here's a subtitle, Inside the Secret Network Behind Masked mass surveillance, endless war, and Skynet. And they point out that, of course, this goes back to the Hylum Forum, the NQTEL, which is the venture capital arm of the CIA, and direct funding from DARPA, NASA, and the NSA. This is something that's been going on for 20 years. It's a very lengthy article. We don't have time to go into all the details, but you should take a look at it and understand where Google is coming out. Today, we see the results of that. We see where they're headed in the future with the brain implant chips that, of course, we just need to trust Google. They would never misuse that power that they would have. We see where they're coming from, a creation, a collaboration with the U.S. surveillance state. And then we get a glimpse of what they're doing at the moment and something that reflects on CISPA as well. The Guardian reports that WikiLeaks demands answers after Google hands the staff emails to U.S. government. That's right, for three years, they were collecting everything they could on WikiLeaks staff members, three in particular, and they just now notified them. WikiLeaks said, it is astonished and disturbed that Google waited more than two and a half years to notify its subscribers, potentially depriving them of their ability to protect their rights to privacy, association, and freedom from illegal searches. And one of the people at WikiLeaks had this quote, she said, Knowing that the FBI read the words I wrote to console my mother over a death in the family makes me feel sick. That's one aspect that people who say they really don't care if the government looks at all of their emails, that's one aspect they should think of. Don't you have any self-respect? Don't you have anything that is private that you don't feel like uh, uh, goons in the central government ought to be pawing over your personal private matters? Don't you have any self-respect? That's all I can say to the people who think that the surveillance state doesn't matter, that we need this in order to catch criminals. We need blanket surveillance, which we're getting. Now, she also accused Google of helping the U.S. government conceal, quote, the invasion of privacy into a British journalist's personal emails. Neither Google nor the U.S. government are living up to their own laws or rhetoric in privacy or in press protection, she said. Well, of course, that's the whole point of CISPA. See, they've been doing this for a very long time. They've been working with the NSA, the CIA, since their inception. They've been spying on us in a dragnet way. And of course, this is to protect them and companies like cell phone companies, internet service providers who have been collaborators, who have been government snitches. It is to protect them for what they call intelligence sharing. That's what CISPA is about, Cyber Intelligence Sharing Protection Act, to protect people like Google that is doing this. Julian Assange, WikiLeaks founder and editor-in-chief, said these secret search warrants were part of a, quote, serious and seriously wrong attempt to build an alleged conspiracy case against me and my staff. He said the real conspiracy was Google rolling over yet again to help the U.S. government violate the Constitution by taking over journalists' private emails in response to give us everything warrants. And he also pointed out that it stands in stark contrast to what Twitter did. Twitter fought and blocked these same kind of requests from the U.S. government. But, of course, 
not in the case of Google. That's why the government designed and built it in the first place. Now, it's interesting as we look at the internet, which was created by the government, by DARPA as a DARPA project, the unintended consequences of their surveillance state. Of course, when they watch us and they create the mechanism to watch us, we also have the ability to watch them and to understand what they're doing to a much greater degree. We see this report from InfoWars, sheriffs want a popular police tracking app disabled. This is an app where you go back and you look to see where the police are. It's called Waze. Sheriffs are campaigning to pressure Google to turn off a feature on its Waze traffic software that warns drivers when police are nearby. They say one of the technology industry's most popular mobile apps could put officers' lives in danger from would-be police killers who can find where their targets are parked. Look, they're not under any danger. This is something that's been done millions of times all across the world. There's not a single incident to establish this, and yet in their paranoia, they want to shut it down. They point out that Waze was purchased by Google for nearly a billion dollars in 2013. Of course, if you don't know what this app is, it's a GPS navigation social networking app. They have 50, 50 million users in 200 countries that use this free service for real-time traffic guidance and warnings about nearby congestion, car accidents, speed traps, or traffic cameras. Of course, that's why people are using Waze primarily to look for speed traps. Maybe these sheriffs ought to take a look at the example of the New York City police who, when they got angry at City Hall, said, we're not going to unnecessarily ticket and arrest people in order to make revenue for you. That's the real story. Now, stay with us right after the break. We're going to ask if maybe mosquitoes ought to become the mascot of governments. And we're going to look at the panic about the Disneyland measles outbreak. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Every year we make resolutions to lose weight and get in shape. And the truth is it's hard, even with diet and exercise, because of toxic food and our environment that is stressing our bodies more than ever before. Working with experts in nutrition and biochemistry, I found that super high quality nutraceuticals, in addition to my diet and exercise, were the answers that synergistically worked. I can see the drastic changes every day with the amount of weight I've lost, my increased stamina, and more of a twinkle in my eye. That's why we are now so excited to launch the InfoWars Life Resolution Pack, combining three essential formulations, oxygen-based cleanser oxy powder, the secret 12 bioavailable vitamin B12, and your choice of super female or super male vitality. Now all available at a discounted price to you and your family to bring in the new year and make 2015 a true success. That's InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. 2015 is the year to do it, and it all starts at InfoWarsLife.com. City of Austin tap water versus filtered City of Austin tap water. I can like taste dirt in it. God knows what's in this. This is an aftertaste. Tastes like Austin water? Yeah, it does. Ugh. These people just sampled City of Austin tap water straight from the faucet. Next, we had them try a sample of tap water filtered through the ProPure G2.0 filtration system. High quality H2O. That one is better. Tastes like nothing. Yep, I know what good water tastes like. It's good water. Most tap water contains added substances like fluoride, chlorine, Monsanto's deadly pesticide, glyphosate, and many others. Studies prove that these substances are linked to an assortment of major health issues, including tooth decay, lowered IQ, and even cancer. It tastes like you're drinking out of the lake when you're drinking tap water. It has uh, that uh, processed flavor to it. The ProPure G2.0 filtration system removes these deadly substances and many more, leaving only fresh tasting, deliciously clean water. Okay, this is very tasty. It's good water. Refreshing. It's good. <laughs> Go to InfoWarsStore.com today. Use promo code WATER and save 10% off your ProPure purchase. Again, that's InfoWarsStore.com or call 1-888-253-3139. I heard the outcry from people like yourself. I looked at the Republican Party platform and saw it had been in there. 
and I looked at the general attitude that many people in this building have had for years, which is that they believe that your rights can be controlled by them. And I would argue that with them, because I believe that the Second Amendment doesn't come from a government institution, a bureaucrat, or a politician. It comes from God Almighty. brought me out here is I'm sick and tired of asking the government for permission uh, to use my Second Amendment rights. And I was proud to join up with a lot of these uh, constituents here and uh, demanding that the government give them back. What I'm trying to achieve is to restore the Constitution the way it was intended so that we don't have to pass a test, uh, pay a fee or a fine to get our Second Amendment rights. The Texans have the right to defend themselves regardless of the situation. HB 195 would allow open carry or concealed carry and it would make the CHL process um, optional. So we will still have the CHL for reciprocity reasons across the state, but if you're in Texas and you stay in Texas, then it's up to you whether you submit to that or not. If you applied the same principles that some of the bureaucrats and politicians here in Austin are trying to apply to the Second Amendment, uh, if you tried to do that to the First Amendment, people would be absolutely going insane. I would ask that anybody that loves liberty, loves the notion of personal responsibility, and doesn't think that our rights come from government but from God to join us in this fight. Sold out for weeks due to the difficult and extensive proprietary process behind its creation, the exclusive InfoWars Life Secret 12 formulation is now back in stock in the last limited shipment of 2014. The most bioactive form that has been created with our proprietary process. This ultra clean vitamin B12 nutraceutical has been carefully crafted and developed over the last two years and is based on cellular science of how your body actively absorbs essential nutrients. Secret 12 is taken by mouth, right on the tongue, and then swallowed. No needles, no injections. Vitamin B12 deficiency is linked to scores of serious problems. And Secret 12 is a fusion of two organic proprietary forms of vitamin B12, bringing you a true nutraceutical quality vitamin B12. Secret 12. Secret 12 is an excellent Christmas gift and is tailor-made to boost your New Year's resolutions. Supplies of Secret 12 are very limited. Secure yours today at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. 2015 is almost here, and with it comes those New Year's resolutions to finally transform your body the way you want it. There's a reason over 88% of New Year's resolutions fail. Make this year different by equipping yourself with Oxy Powder, the next level in cleansing the body naturally. Using Super Oxygenation, Oxy Powder, available through InfoWarsLife.com, gently cleanses the body while you sleep with easy capsules. Tens of thousands of individuals have used Oxy Powder to cleanse their bodies and aid in their transformations. Even InfoWars Nightly News Director Rob Dew has been using Oxy Powder with incredible success. Took it that first day, then I took it for six more days after that. 12 pounds melted off in about a week, I'd say a week, seven days. 2015 can be different. Diet and exercise are important, but a lot of us have already tried that. Oxy Powder flushes it out. Secure your Oxy Powder at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. Well, governments are fond of using predators as symbols of their government. Think about the American eagle or the Russian bear. Maybe a better symbol might be the mosquito. Going back to the Declaration of Independence, Thomas Jefferson talked about a government that sent out swarms of officers to harass our people and eat out their substance. But I think the fact that mosquitoes essentially do their work imperceptively, if they do it correctly, after they take from you what they want, they'd leave you with disease. So maybe we ought to start using the mosquito as the symbol. But of course, we've got our technocracy looking at many different ways they can use mosquitoes to carry out their agenda. Just last week, we had the Harvard professor who was speaking at Davos. This is the story from Paul Joseph Watson on Friday, talking about how privacy was over. They were going to use mosquitoes to collect your DNA, and there was nothing you could do about it. They were going to turn that over to the government. They're going to turn it over to insurance companies, use it however they wished. And now we see that in Florida, we have a British company talking about releasing millions of genetically modified mosquitoes in the Florida Keys containing 
herpes simplex virus, and E. coli bacteria. Don't worry, it won't hurt you. This is what they say. As war wages over genetic modifications of the food supply, mega biotech companies have already begun launching campaigns to release millions of GMO insects in the Florida Keys region that have been crossbred with herpes simplex virus and E. coli bacteria. Of course, this is put into their genetic DNA, but they say, don't worry. This is to keep them from breeding. They're not just sterilizing these uh, insects and then hoping that they're not going to be able to reproduce. No, they're actually going to poison them with herpes and E. coli. But you don't have to worry. It's not going to transmit over to your DNA. Really? They already combined a virus with a mosquito genetics. Why can't that genetic modification make its way to you as well? But, uh, of course, we're not supposed to look too closely at that. Instead, we're supposed to be panicked about measles. This outbreak that began in Disneyland, and they don't know who patient zero is, is now being used to demonize anyone who wants to question the safety and the efficacy of vaccines. We have panic spreading everywhere. Just look at this article that just came out in uh, California, a Costco location in Gilroy, California. One of their largest sites said that they had a shopper who visited their store that had measles. And so now they're putting up messages and the media is dutifully spreading the panic about measles. The headline from Breitbart says measles panic spreads at Bay Area, Costco and Walmart. How about the media spreads panic about measles? If we look at this uh, report from NBC in San Diego, they have a timeline of the outbreak of measles. And if you look at uh, January 14th, they talk about Six siblings, ranging in age from 22 months to 18 years old, came into an urgent care with rashes and measles-like symptoms. Staff immediately shut the center down and took the names of the patients. You see, they're taking this more seriously than they did the Ebola outbreak. And I say that because of the reactions of the CDC and the media. Of course, we were all told that when someone contracted Ebola, they certainly took their time in shutting down uh, hospitals. They took several days. That's why nurses came down with it. They didn't have the appropriate gear. And we had the CDC telling everybody there's nothing to worry about. We see exactly the opposite with measles, a disease that I had as a child. Many of us had these childhood diseases that we now have to be vaccinated for because they're so dire and so dangerous. Can't you see the agenda going on here? Everybody my age and a couple of decades younger it was a common thing for us to have measles and various childhood diseases, and we need to look at the risk of other things that may be produced by these vaccines from these uh, adjuvants that they put into the vaccine, uh, formaldehyde, mercury, other things. We need to be very concerned about possible side effects. Rob Dew breaks this down for us in more detail. This is Rob Dew reporting for InfoWars.com and InfoWars Nightly News. And this report is an update on two reports that I've filed this month, basically, and the one I actually filed just over the weekend. The first one is about the little girl who died of the flu after taking the flu shot. Well, now there's another little girl that died. In addition to the numerous other cases that are out there, somebody sent me this this morning and said, you have to look at this one. Here's the uh, headline from the Daily Mail. Girl five dies from strain of flu she was vaccinated against as deadly epidemic continues to sweep across the U.S. And this is something we're seeing everywhere. And the CDC comes out with this song and dance that I'm about to show you, where they say, well, we, we guessed the wrong strain of flu. They didn't guess anything wrong. They're deliberately putting this stuff in there so people get the flu. But we'll get more, more into that in a second. A five-year-old girl has died in hospital three days after developing a strain of flu that she was vaccinated against as the deadly outbreak of the virus continues to sweep across the country. And once again, this article is filled with pictures of this beautiful little girl. She loved Frozen. She loved playing with her friends. She liked the color purple. They always put this stuff in there, and it really just tears at my heart reading these stories of parents who are trying to protect their kids from flu, and they think they're doing the right thing by getting the vaccine. Here's more. The youngster is the fourth child in the Nevada-based county and the 56 nationwide to have died in the flu in the past few months as vaccines have proved largely ineffective. Kira's death also comes after the CDC reported last week that more than three quarters of people who had the injection, which contains strains of influenza A, this year will get the virus anyway. So even with all the hype about getting your flu vaccine, how it's everywhere in the media, everywhere in the news, you go to every drugstore, they're trying to get you to do your flu shot. Yeah, 7-Eleven promoting uh, workers to get their floofy shots. It's the worst performing ever since they've been recording this 10 years, 10 years now that we're into this flu vaccine hysteria and tracking the results. 
So are you gonna get the flu shot? Are you gonna give it to your kids? I'm gonna share with you a little story. This happened just this past weekend, playing football out in the street with a bunch of my neighbors. And uh, earlier, uh, it was a, a week before that, my kids weren't allowed to play with their kids because they all had the flu, It's one family. And in talking, they said, oh yeah, well we got all, all our flu shot injections and we still got it. And then another neighbor from across the street says, they all had their flu shots and three out of the four got the flu. And now let's turn to the measles outbreak. I just put out a report over the weekend, uh, Disneyland measles outbreak caused by the vaccine, question mark. And I went through the statistics and the LA Times article saying that uh, five people had gotten it that were vaccinated, two out of the five workers that uh, were vaccinated got the disease and that's only the ones that they tested. Well, now we got one more. Measles outbreak traced to Disneyland continues to grow. At least 85 cases are now confirmed in seven states. Alaska health officials are closely monitoring one-year-old Rivki Webb after she tested positive for measles this week. Her mother, Emily, said the family had just returned from a visit to Southern California. Rivki had also just received the measles vaccine. And then you get to the end of this CBS News article and you got a quote from the mother who says, I want people to be aware and to vaccinate their kids, said Emily Webb, because the whole reason that she got sick in the first place was because people don't vaccinate. Well, if you vaccinated your kid, then she should be protected from the virus, right? And isn't that the whole reason they tell you to get these and that they're safe and effective? Well, and then your daughter gets it after she'd been vaccinated. And I read in the insert, in three different spots, it says you could get measles or a measles-like rash. In the insert, as one of the side effects. Yet people still continue to do it because they don't ask for these inserts. It's amazing, totally amazing. But here's Wired Magazine. Why did vaccinated people get measles at Disneyland? Blame the unvaccinated. And this is medical ar arrogance at its finest right here. They, they claim because people aren't getting the vaccine that they're making the vaccinated people sick, which just defies logic because supposedly if you're vaccinated, you're protected from the disease. But that's not the case. And we find that time and time again. And it's hard to find these. And that's why we really make a big deal out of it when we do see it, when we see people admitted that, hey, they were vaccinated, but they still got the disease. We need to make note of this because they tell you time and time again that you should inject these foreign substances into your bodies and it's going to protect you. And anytime we don't see it, we have to point it out. We have to keep these people honest because the CDC, that's their job is to get more people vaccinated. That's the program because most of these CDC heads are former big pharma employees. And this is the whole thing. When I, I interviewed uh, Dr. Sherry Tenpenny years ago, went up to her office and she said, you know, Rob, this is what I think it is. I think that the reason they push these vaccines, especially on these young kids, is so they become lifelong customers because they're gonna see these other problems crop up. They may not get, have a, a serious adverse reaction, but they'll get something like allergies or they'll get earaches or they'll get tonsillitis, something that keeps them coming back for more medical care. You really need to do the research on vaccinations and we need to pressure these vaccine companies out there to do the obvious research. Let's look at all the problems. Let's not look at these carefully clinical studies that are paid for by the vaccine companies. Let's get some independent studies in there. Let's demand that our government do these independent studies. Let's demand that the CDC do these independent studies. Let's stop taking the vaccine company's word that everything is safe and effective because it's not. We know it's not. And we can see these things time and time again. So it's time to start holding their feet to the fire and making them accountable for what they're doing. They have blanket immunity now. There's these vaccine courts that pay out the damages but the vaccine companies never have to admit culpability. It's time to end stuff like this. If you like reports like these, please consider becoming a member of PrisonPlanet.tv. We're still running our biggest special ever. For $29.95, you can become a member of PrisonPlanet.tv for a whole year and share your username and password with up to 20 people. And remember, you gotta work on your immune system. That is what's gonna protect you from these diseases, not hocus pocus from the vaccine community, especially those out there who are profiting from making the vaccines themselves. Well, that's it for our news tonight. If you're watching us on Google, please subscribe to our channel. And if you're not a subscriber to Prison Planet TV, please consider subscribing there as well. We have our lowest price ever, $29.95. That's part of the year-end, year-beginning special that we run every year, but it's the lowest level it's ever been. And of course, extending to the most number of people we've ever extended that to, 20 people can use that membership. Join us tomorrow night at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. City of Austin tap water versus filtered City of Austin tap water.
I can like taste dirt in it. God knows what's in this. This has an aftertaste. Tastes like Austin water? Yeah, it does. Ugh. These people just sampled City of Austin tap water straight from the faucet. Next, we had them try a sample of tap water filtered through the ProPure G2.0 filtration system. High quality H2O. That one is better. Tastes like nothing. Yep, I know what good water tastes like. It's good water. Most tap water contains added substances like fluoride, chlorine, Monsanto's deadly pesticide, glyphosate, and many others. Studies prove that these substances are linked to an assortment of major health issues, including tooth decay, lowered IQ, and even cancer. It tastes like you're drinking out of the lake when you're drinking tap water. Yeah, it has uh, that uh, processed flavor to it. The ProPure G2.0 filtration system removes these deadly substances and many more, leaving only fresh tasting, deliciously clean water. Okay, this is very tasty. It's good water. Refreshing. It's good. <laughs> Go to InfoWarsStore.com today. Use promo code WATER and save 10% off your ProPure purchase. Again, that's InfoWarsStore.com or call 1-888-253-3139. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.